All right, thanks for joining this session, everyone. And I'm sure you would find this lesson <clears throat> quite interesting. Learning with Neopod. This is a basic get started type of session. And I'm <clears throat> assuming that most of you have little or no knowledge about how to use Neopod. So what I'm going to do here, if I switch to my student's screen, student's view, like all of you have already entered the code and you can view this screen. At the top right hand side, you would find this icon called notes. I would encourage all of you to please click there and choose one of the options to take notes. So what will happen, you can take notes in the window itself and all of your notes, slide decks, all the hyperlinks, videos would be provided to you at the end of this session. So you can choose either Google Drive or OneDrive as your cloud, or you can choose an email. What I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna enter my email address here and send. So what will happen? At the end of the session, Neopod server will send you an email in case if you have chosen that, and you would find all the slide decks there in PDF or Word. So for example, I'm just taking notes here to give live demonstration or live demo to all my participants. Right, so I would find these notes and system will send me the email. This is student's view. And this is only available in students window, not in the teacher's window. Now I switch to my teacher's window. Right, I hope there's no confusion. When you use join.neopod.com and you enter this code, you would view this lesson as a student. At the same time, when you look at my screen, this is teacher's screen. Teacher's screen is more powerful, would have more features than student screen. All right, so let's work carry on so best practice is to have an agenda for the learning for students this might be learning outcome or the learning objective based on the standards but for adults learner for teachers it might be based on expectations for implementation of the learning so let me just gather some basic information from you this is a collaboration board This is a collaboration board. This is a great way to start brainstorming or having a debate in the classroom. You can see here on the teacher's screen, it says, would you like to approve students' comments before they are posted? So since all of you are adults, I trust you, I would say, yes, I would like to approve students' comments before they are posted. Or I said, no, I don't want to approve. You can post your comments there directly. So what do you already know about Neopod and what do you want to know? If I switch to student screen, you won't find any other option there, right? But you can check here on the teacher's screen. I can share this collaboration board through email, through social, or I can generate a link. That would be a live collaboration board. It's a great way to have brainstorming in the class. And for students view, it will remain anonymous. So what you can do, you can post your thoughts and let me see okay so you already watched a video here using neopod now this is student screen this is anonymous you won't see who's posting what but you can like or yeah you can like someone's post when i switch to teacher screen as I mentioned, I can share or I can delete. Card is deleted. Or I can sort these cards, these thoughts alphabetically, students name wise, or I can click who's posted first, or I can click or sort them as per the number of likes. All right, so that's good, Deepaj. You have you've been introduced to <clears throat> Neopod by one of your colleagues. 
Okay, Justin, Nearport is great for dismantling new information. Students are longing to engage. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I had not heard of it prior to this conference. Okay, no problem, Brianna. I'm sure <coughs> you would understand Neopod and you would find it very interesting by the end of this session and you would be excited to launch it in your class soon. Know about it, have not used it. No problem, Mark. I'll take you through all the steps and I'm sure you'll love it. Now, I can see your names, but if I switch to students view, all these cards are anonymous, right? As I've just shown you taking notes, that's a great way to take notes. I can say here, this is my slide number six, right? When I get these notes, system will email me these notes. I would see all of these comments, all of these notes. All right, I can see here 13 people are already in this session. But 21 people are in this Zoom session. So I would request people, those who have not joined this Neopod lesson, to please go to join.neopod.com. Let me copy paste this and enter the code Z62QR. It's right in the chat box. Okay, so Ivan has posted an image. Wonderful, Ivan. <laughs> right, I'm just moving to the next slide now. Here is a video embedded. So as a teacher, I have two options. I can run this video on my device or I can run this video on all the devices. What will happen when you run when I choose to run this on my device, you would see a message on your screen that eyes up on teacher's screen, video will play it on teacher's device. Or I can say all device. So what will happen? You can watch this video at your own pace, right? Like some of them, some of you would have good bandwidth, so video would run perfectly. But some of you would have low bandwidth, then you would have problem. So just to address this problem i've already copied and pasted the url here in the chat let me do that one more time yep all right so let's watch this video here on my screen this is little over two minutes that gives a clear concise picture of neopod as a learning tool so let's watch this in case you're having some difficulties you can go to chat and you would find the URL of this video. Introducing Nearpod. With Nearpod, you can make every lesson interactive. Launch lessons your students can't wait to join you. Collaborative engaging activities like virtual reality, simulations, and game appearances. As the teacher, you'll always know where your students are. directly in the videos to make them interactive. Get started even faster with our library of pre-made lessons and videos, built in partnership with some of your favorite brands. You can use them as is or customize to meet the unique needs of your students. Once you're ready to launch your lesson, choose from one of our more than three teaching modes. In live participation mode, you control the pace and students participate on their devices, either in person or remotely through web conferences. Student-based mode, students move through and participate on their own, whether they're working from home or in class working with centers, stations, or groups. With front-of-class mode, you can use Nearpod without student devices and facilitate collaborative discussions. Imagine what you can do with Nearpod. Your students will love lesson prep and live engaging media with collaborative ways for them to show off how much they've learned. You'll love unlocking having reports to inform the next day's instruction. You'll wonder how you taught without it. Learn more and get started for free at nearpod.com. Oh, sorry, Henry. There was no sound. 
I'm so sorry about that if you couldn't hear it if you could not hear it sorry All right so I've divided this presentation into three three sections the first section is based around how Neopod supports learning and how it should be used to be more effective and the second section is we can package lessons as an option to personalize learning that would be the third section so this section is more about why a teacher would use it now i'm going to share with you how and why you should use neopod what i can do i can add an activity here on the go if i decide something let's say let me ask you a true false question and i say are you experiencing a live lesson, live Neopod lesson? Is it true or false? Where live Neopod lesson, where teacher controls it, right? And students have, <coughs> they do not have privileges to move backward and forward they cannot go back and forth share sorry i think i've got slow internet today Maybe in beijing it's weekend so bandwidth is fully occupied i believe so you can have an activity like this you can check the pulse of your class on the go by adding an activity like this. I don't know, but for some reason it's not working. Anyway, I'm just just please ignore this. No, I don't want to end. It doesn't appear on student screen. Okay, let me end this. So let's check Neopod as a presentation platform. At its core, Neopod is a presentation platform. It was originally designed and built to make teaching and learning as a whole group more interactive and engaging. This use is typically done when providing direct instruction in the class like this. The key point that changes the learning experience is that every student can participate in every discussion. Yes, I said in every discussion and in every question. This gives a teacher a much clearer picture of students learning during the instruction and you're just going to experience this in a moment think about your classes what can happen to learning when every student has the opportunity to participate with every question i've just mentioned here yes everyone can participate and it's possible to check for understanding like this always model what you're teaching in your classroom so I would request all of you to please answer this question quickly and on the teacher screen I can see the participation level and even I can check your answers also so I'm just going back to student screen and I answer here Summit. If I want, I can record my voice also. Okay, submit. Unable. What's going on? All right, I can see here like Justin has <laughs> just responded. You can check for understanding and just listen for students' needs. Yes, that's right. Uh, now you will have better engagement throughout the listening. Very true. Yes, Ivan, you are right, absolutely right, Jane. More learning is taking place, yeah. You can check the pulse of your class, you can change the pace of your teaching, you can change the strategy. I can see here 39% people have already participated. This is teacher's screen. Now I'm just gonna move to student screen by pressing command tilde, or if you're using Windows device, you can press command tab, oh sorry, control tab, I believe, yeah. Because of some reason, it's kicking me out. Let me refresh. 
All right, 50% people have already responded. Now, if I feel like sharing the best answer, I can share the best answer with the whole class. For example, I'm just gonna share Justin's thoughts with the whole class. Now you would see in your, on your teacher screen, you can check for understanding and adjust lesson for students' needs, right? That's, a, let's say, this is the best answer and I wanna give feedback to my students. Right, so I can unshare. That has been unshared. Right, so I move to the next slide now. You can see here, <coughs> using a PowerPoint or Google slide, you can upload to Nearpod. You can upload PDFs, JPEG, Sway, and more. And you can make learning more engaging and interactive. It's not limited to PowerPoint, PPTs, or Google Slides. Learning, you must have noticed that in PowerPoints or Keynotes or Google Slides, these applications not allow for much active learning. Learning has often been passive using these applications. And because the nature of Nearpod and the way learning is designed, even a basic presentation can support active learning like this. I'll take you through how to do that in a few minutes. Students can take notes. Like I mentioned at the beginning of my <laughs> session, you can take notes through email or Google Drive or OneDrive. This is a great way actually to take notes. These notes are editable. Notes can become questions about learning, connections to the previous or future learning, connections to learning in other academic areas and reflecting your own learning as lesson progress. So making notes about important piece of information is always suggested in the class as well. So on the next slide, you will be taken on a field trip virtually, right? And how do notes make learning active? I'm just gonna show you in a couple of moments. Instead of just looking at the virtual reality field trip, you can give your learners a purpose for exploring and ask them to make notes in their notes section about what they see and what they notice. Right, so let's check here. This is the English classroom of Cathedral of Learning. You can move around. This is a 360 degree view. Moving the screen with either mouse, touchpad, or touch screen, depending on the device you are using. You can encourage your students to take notes and then later they can respond. You can give them five seconds countdown so no one is surprised when you move them to out of virtual reality experience. That's what I do in my classrooms. So you can visit places and get the feeling here in Neopod. Language teachers help students to visualize and start writing. Or if you're on a field trip to somewhere else, the math teacher can <coughs> teach the angles, shapes, right? Right, so I'm just <coughs> moving to the next slide now. So what are the some things you notice about the difference between classrooms then and classrooms now? You can hold learners responsible for what you have asked them to do. This is also a great time to demonstrate and show your students that like, notes taking is a good way so that they can respond as and when required. I think I'm having issues as a student. I'm just gonna join again. I don't know why it's kicking me out every time. Yeah, I can see here as a teacher, students are responding. 42.9% people have chosen no one not to answer. 21.4% people have selected option A, that is sitting was not flexible. And I can check here and I can <coughs> put the students on the spotlight if they have not responded. 
and I can share the results also. Let me enter the code. Right, I can see here how students are engaged. Even I can click here on this icon, which shows the number of students in this session. And if I want, I can kick out someone from the session. If it shows a red line, it means student is not active. Student is on different tab. The green means student is active. All right, so let me share the results with each one of you. Let's submit this. Okay, I can share the results. Now it should be on your student's screen like this. This is my answer and that's how my class has responded. Right. The second way Nearpod can be used is the central location for your learning resources. You can keep all of your lessons at one place so that your students can work through a lesson either with the teacher or independently. Like right now, you are experiencing a live lesson, right? And I'm taking you through the lesson. You do not have any control. You cannot go back and forth. So this is a live lesson. A lesson can begin and include teacher-created resources or the resources you create. And those tools can be housed on the web on Nearpod server. There are more than 8,500 standard aligned lessons readily available on Nearpod. You can fetch those lessons, you can edit those lessons, customize those lessons as per your student's requirement, your class requirement, and you can launch those lessons. This feature was available, was sorry, this feature was released in September last year. Here, you, what you can do, you can download any video from YouTube or you can upload video from your device and you can make that video interactive with your pod. You can add multiple choice questions, you can add open-ended questions, even you can search in your pod video library and find more than 1,000 standard aligned videos ready to be launched with all the activities. So you can make any difficult topic relatable for your students and you can make this learning interactive and engaging in your classroom. We would experience this soon in the third section of my presentation. So finally, Nearpod can be used as a personalized learning platform by designing and sharing lessons Learning can be modified for students who are on different levels or work at or work at different paces, different speeds. Because of the formative assessment, opportunities can be built in it to make it easier for teachers to identify learning or misconceptions and prepare lessons to address those problems. Like I can add an activity here on the go. I say open-ended question, I'd say how are you finding this session so far? I tried at the beginning of the session also, but this did not work. Let's see if it works now. Okay, so I've just added this activity on the go where you would find this question on your screen. How are you finding, oh, sorry, finding the session so far? interesting way to make learning fun and interactive right so I can see here on my teacher screen how students have been responding okay thanks Deepa thanks for <coughs> you you're finding it helpful 
interesting okay Vayana have has she isn't on oh okay informative thanks thanks Justin so that's how you can add any activity on the go and check the pulse of your class so I'm just gonna close this activity yes activity has been ended but what I have planned I have planned that I will take you through a demo lesson this is not a complete lesson this is just a few slides to give you a taste of the board this lesson is a part of uh, SEL social emotional learning you are going to experience the same way your students would experience when you launch Neopod lesson in your classrooms right so are you ready every Neopod lesson comes with essential question at the beginning and all the lessons would have this essential questions and you would find few slides like this with learning objective and you can edit these learning objectives if you want to you can modify these slides and all Neopod lessons include the transition slides like this to support teachers and students as they work through the lesson often these kind of transition slides are used to introduce the next piece of learning this is an interactive video here on slide number 23 which is loading now okay in the meantime let me go to chat window and check if someone is asking appearing on your screen yeah sorry Deepa I think it's slight delay that's why we are having this issue all right let's check here this is an interactive video it's up to me how I would play this video so option number one teacher plays and question appears on students devices students the second option students play watch the video and answer questions at their own pace which I do not want right now I want option number one and I would go with it now you can notice here these blue bubbles here blue dots these dots means the activities have been added here in the video at this particular moment it should be one minute few seconds or few seconds that's interactive mode let me hit the play button Here's question one, the activity one here. Have you had have you ever had a conversation with your students about whether they are flexible thinkers or rigid thinkers? So you should see the question on your screen. Okay, I can check here on my teacher's screen that people are responding. You can see here almost half of the class have selected option A, that is yes. One third of the class has chosen no, that's option B. 44% have already answered this correctly. 50%, that's good. All right, so let's carry on with it. Thanks, Craig. Learning to think flexibly is important to help us problem solve, be creative, and adapt to challenges and changes. Some learners find it easy to be flexible in their thinking, to view information in various ways, and make relevant connections to what they already know. But other learners tend to be more rigid in their thinking, which can be helpful for making quick decisions and keeping things simple and efficient, but it can lead to difficulties. For example, a rigid thinker may get stuck with literal interpretations of reading material and lose out on hidden meanings and themes. All right, here's another question. How does a student think influence how they learn? Oh, sorry, I didn't have to rephrase this question. 
how does the student think influence how they learn Right here I can check nobody has responded so far. I'm on slide number 23 and I have 64 slides today to share with you and I'm all and I've already crossed the 50% of my time duration so I need to skip few slides like I'm just gonna skip the last activity of this video and moving to moving to next slide. This is very interesting activity. This is called draw it. But before you begin, I would like to show you the options available here in the student screen. So I switch to my student screen. Let me full screen this one. What is the difference between rigid and flexible thinking? Draw a picture to go with each term. This is student screen. You can click on this arrow, you can show in height question. And what I'm going to show you today on this slide, you will remember forever, I'm 100% sure, because this is an awesome feature. This is called Immersive Reader. This is very popular in my school, where we have second language learners. Immersive Reader is a <clears throat> very helpful feature, very helpful tool and it is provided by Microsoft. So let's check this out. I can create any slide. I can create any slide using this immersive reader. Click on play button here. What is the difference between rigid and flexible thinking? Draw a picture to go with each term. I can change the pace. I can change the voice setting like male, female voice. What is the difference between rigid and flexible thinking? Draw a picture to go with each term. And you can immersify any slide. I mean, your students can do that. You do not have that feature in the teacher screen because you are not going to use it, right? But students would use it if you have second language learners in your class. This is very interesting. Text preferences. You can increase the text size or you can reduce the text size. You can increase the spacing. You can change the font style. If you have some visual learners, you can change the theme. That's how you can immersify a slide. There are different colors available here. And you can click on grammar options. You can check nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs. Now I'm confused which one is what. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna click on show labels option. Now I can see, okay, it's red is verb, purple is noun, green is adjective. All right, let me just turn them off. And the third option here is reading preferences, line focus. can increase the line focus and I can enable the picture dictionary. Now let's check here, picture dictionary. Picture, should see an icon here, yes. This is picture dictionary. Say draw, difference can see the difference term these are the different terms right and it has a translator also for example if I pick Chinese simplified and I can check in the dictionary here what now check here Chinese Shama. that's right Shama means what flexible Flexible. Yep, that's right. So this option is available only in student screen. I exit. Now I can pick color and I can choose a color and I can draw whatever I want to draw. And I can submit. Now here on the student screen, it shows that this has been submitted, right? Now I go to teacher's view and I can check the progress, how people are doing. I can say Hardwang has submitted, Anita has submitted, Justin has submitted as well. 
right so please excuse me i'm moving to the next slide now people those who are drawing they will be taken to the next slide those who are still drawing all right so assess assessing students learning is more using the quizzes it's more in a formal way but still keep the engagement and active learning at the core of neopodler when the quiz is over students can know exactly how they did there can be an opportunity in the moment to address any common misunderstandings and you can close the learning feedback loop students work through the quiz at their own pace while the teacher can monitor the progress on his or her own screen like i can see the progress here and this is teacher's student screen sorry i can see here justin has answered all three questions and all three questions are i mean answers are correct deepa first is correct second one is incorrect yeah first correct second incorrect third is correct right so that's how you can have the assessment in your lessons itself right moving to the next slide now i have to finish quickly because i've got just 15 more minutes this is fill in the blanks here you can pick the correct option and you can just drop it and you can get to know by the end that whether these options were you have selected were correct or not i'm just picking them and randomly and dropping them here you can see here you got one out of seven correct answers right so it gives the feedback immediately i know you people are still trying to figure out how to do that just drag and drop right just in five correct out of seven moving to next slide now sorry i need to rush through quickly so these are the three options these days we have the physical classroom remote classroom or hybrid classroom learning with neopod can be accomplished no matter where your students are and where teacher happen to be now i move to the third part of it so we have got a basic understanding of what and why now it's time to teach how what you can do you can go to neopod.com and you can use either your school email or you can use google credentials or office 365 credentials and you can log on when you log on to google i'm sorry slip of tongue when you log on to neopod you would find library here this is my library and i have i have organized all of my lessons in these folders and i have color coded these folders with the titles if you're looking for lessons you can search lessons in the neopod library by clicking here now you can choose either lesson or you need activities or you need videos for example i need only lesson you can select the state standards united states standards you can choose subjects for example technology and how about grade 8 or maybe high school right and i'm just going through these lessons available or i can put a keyword here let's say vpn what is vpn okay not found no problems let's say social media right so these are the lessons already available ready to launch lessons in 
Neopod. Alright, I'm just gonna pick this one. Social media behavior and cyberbullying. I can preview lesson. If I find a lesson <coughs> up to my expectations, I can add to my library. So without waiting for it to load, I am clicking to add to my library. So a lesson has been added. So it says show in my library. Now you would find this lesson in my library, Neopod library. Whenever I click to this top left hand side icon, Neopod icon, it will take me to the library. Right, this is the one. Social media behaviors and cyberbullying. So let me edit this lesson, check. So whenever you download a premium content from Neopod lesson library, you will see this option. After downloading, when you want to edit it, whether you want to duplicate a lesson or you want to edit it directly. I want to edit it directly without duplicating. Right, you can see all the slide decks here. For example, I don't need this one. So I pick the slide and I delete it. This slide has been deleted and I feel the slide number seven should be my slide number two. So I drag and drop here. Right, these are the activities like open-ended questions, fill in the blanks, slideshows, draw it activity, poll, and the thank you one I need at the end. Now I'm looking for some videos to be added in my slides. So what I'll do, I'll say add content and activities. Let me find something, video. These are the different activities available. You can check, like time to climb, to gamifying your classroom, like Kahoot. You can add open-ended questions, matching pairs, quiz, flip grid, memory test, poll, fill in the blanks, collaboration board, and draw it. But I need a video even if you want you can add a virtual reality field trip you can add a graphic calculator or if you want to add a sway from your microsoft office 365 drive you can have one drive you can have sway if your school is a microsoft school all right so these are the videos let me pick a random one okay how about this one Although it doesn't match with my lesson, but I'm, I'm just picked a random lesson, uh, sorry, random video. Now you can check here, the duration of this video is three minutes. If I want to trim, I can trim this video. And I can see here, activities are already added. Let me modify something. I can click on this edit button and I can edit this activity. Why is the rapper angry? I'll say why is he angry and I save if I want to add an answer I can add answer here all right so activity has been modified I said save and you would find this video is embedded into my lesson and I'm ready to launch my lesson it should be at the bottom yes here it is let me add it here somewhere number after number slide number 10 All right here it is save and exit now i'm ready to launch my lesson if i want to move this particular lesson to any folder i can create folder or i can move this one add to my folder you can see these are my folders Right. So I'm ready to launch this lesson. I have two options. Either launch this lesson live the way I have done the beginning of this session and you are watching my screen, but you do not have any control over the slides. You cannot move back and forth. Right. And the other one is student paced. When you're in remote setting, remote learning, you can 
and your students are in different time zones, you can launch lessons in student pace mode. So what, what will happen? Your students would get this code and this code will be available for 29 days and they can go and check whether they don't understand. They can revisit those particular slides and check the content as many number of times they want. At the same time, you can check the progress and you can share the code using email, social handle, link, or you can embed into your LMS, or you can use Google Classroom, Remind, or Microsoft Teams. You can choose any option, right? So by default, it's 29 days. It can be shared maximum for 365 days, not more than that. And minimum 24 hours. You can see it's all grayed out. Right? Now if you want to preview, you can check the preview and edit. Go back, check this lesson again. And this is still in beta, live participation plus Zoom, where you can launch a live lesson and Zoom and it would be integrated into your Zoom application. All right, that's how we can search lessons, search videos and embed them into lessons. Now I'm going to show you reports. This is very helpful and very useful for teachers where you want to check the student's performance. You can check how your students have done. All right, so let's check this one. Learning with Neopod. After launching a lesson, it's very important to go back and review the information that is provided in the report. Here you can check the report. This is a summary of the report. I can see the name of the student along with his or her IP address. You can, if you want, you can download this into PDF. Now, when you want to download the PDF, you'll have two options. You can download any individual students report or you can download the whole sessions report let me show you the whole sessions report on my local drive All right this is the pdf view and this is the interactive one if i want i can share this report with any fellow teacher by using the email address Right, this is the summary. I can check the question wise, activity wise, how my students have done, how my class has done, and what was their participation. You can check here. So that you can <coughs> change the pace of your teaching and you can <coughs> change the strategy if required. Right, so that's how you can i'm just skipping through these slides because i've already taken you through you can search for lessons search for videos you can move slides you can launch lessons and share the code with your students depends it's live or student based so by this we have come to the end of this session before you guys go away i would encourage you to please if you are if you are a twitter enthusiast feel free to tag me in your tweets or tag vietnam tech conference and use hashtag neopod educator or vtc21 this will this by after attending this lesson you are qualified to become a Neopod Certified Educator, step one. Yay! Right? <laughs> so there, there are three easy steps. So the first step is learn, second is create, third is teach. So today you have attended a workshop to grow your Neopod skills. So you are qualified for step two and step three. Just one more minute, Ivan, and I'll be done. You can get all of the resources from neopod.com. Before you guys go away, I would request you to please give me a few feedback. You would find this on your screen. Click to open this web page 
and feel free to give me an honest feedback. By the time they are filling this feedback survey, Ivan, over to you now. I tried my best to finish within the time, although I I was just rushing through a few slides. No, you made it. I I saw that you've demonstrated all of the, I mean, some amazing features available in Nearpod, many that I had no idea uh, about. Um, we do have a couple minutes. Are there are there any any questions? Yeah, I would love to take those questions. Let me check questions in the chat window. Uh, one other thing that I'll throw in, this presentation in Nearpod is going to be available for a while. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. OK. So if, if anybody wants to go back and take a look at these, um, one thing that we could do is we could add the link to the Nearpod directly into the chat on the Whova app so that others can, can access this. Um, any, any questions, you can pop them right in the chat, or if anyone wants to open up the microphone and ask, feel free to do that. Or you can see my Twitter handle here, Satara. Feel free to follow me. Or if you have any question, direct message me, DM me on Twitter so we can get connected. And I have the same email address with Gmail, satara at gmail.com. Feel free to reach me out if you need any help, any assistance, or if you need any clarification in the future. I'm always available. And I'm available at, I mean, uh, at LinkedIn also. If you want to connect with me through LinkedIn, that's perfectly fine with me. If, if everybody is like me, I'm sure it's, uh, there's a lot of potential here. And I, I, uh, I encourage you use Twitter, use LinkedIn, um, and email side if you have questions. Um, if we could, using reactions or using the camera, whichever, let's give Saad a big round of applause. Clap up here using the reactions. Thank you so much for everything. Pleasure, Pleasure is all mine. Pleasure is all mine. Um, and uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us today uh, at the Vietnam Tech Conference. One more session. Hope you'll uh, hope you find something that you can find interesting moving forward. Thanks, everybody. Have a great thanks for rest joining. Of your day. Thanks for joining. And <clears throat> I'm sure you would appreciate the efforts these organizers have put in. The kind of hard work has gone into it, which is not noticed. But I have done several times. That's how I understand. It's really. It's really very, very demanding, and you need very sincere effort. Much sincere efforts are required. Thanks so much, Sad. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Very well organized. All right, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day. All right, bye, and take care. Stay safe and healthy, everyone.